All right, three types of energy you should be aware of. Remember, you are awesome. Hello, my name is Garth Wolf, and today I want to break down three kinds of energy or forms of energy that are super valuable to know of. These are terms that get thrown around a lot in the spiritual community and are a bit interchangeable sometimes, but some clarity on them will really help you understand what you're accessing when you work with these energies, as well as also in conversation, maybe understand where people are coming from more, or as well as also help you be able to articulate what you're trying to explain to other people as well. These are things I wish I would have known when I first dove into spirituality that someone would have broke down for me. So the first one is kundalini. Now this is a term that gets thrown around a little bit. I'm sure you've heard before. I mean, you have kundalini yoga, you have kundalini breath, you have kundalini rising, kundalini activation. I even have a technique called kundalini punches, which helps you shift your consciousness and activates a little kundalini rush. Now, what is kundalini? Kundalini is a reference to or is, an, is the arising of energy and consciousness that is generally coiled at the base of the spine and rises up. It's a reference to a very specific kind of energy that is inside of us that activates us into transcendental states when fully risen or helps us step into our higher self. Now, there's different forms that people talk about sometimes, like a kundalini rising. This is when the energy that is coiled at the base of the spine actually works its way up the chakra system and rises up the entire chakra system and it's called a kundalini rising this is an extreme activation and a spiritual awakening uh, i believe we have many awakenings throughout our spiritual journey and this would be one of them or a major one sometimes a major shift in it can be that uh, this is a feeling too of like a full harmonization of the chakras and an, an enlightened nirvana like state now once this happens you don't always stay at this this state. It you know it doesn't coil back down, but it can feel that way, and that's why it's referenced as a snake sometimes because of the coiled feeling, as well as the raising up as it rises. The way it can feel sometimes with this like a snake rising, but once it's been risen, you have what is called kundalini activations afterwards. Now these are just terms that I was taught from my teacher. There's different teachings out there from different yogis and whatnot. Um, but kundalini activation is once you've had your kundalini rising or had a kundalini rising you will have more of them, where either the kundalini rises again, taking you to a new higher perspective and a new higher viewpoint realm vibration, or also known as a kundalini activation, when the kundalini reactivates itself and comes on and you are back into that higher state, this vibrational form. Those are two forms of kundalini activation, either a rising again or a reactivation of that state when you pull it forth onto you. And that's something that like the kundalini punches or kundalini yoga can help do is it taps into that energy for a moment and brings it up into you and connects you with it. And so this is the energy and consciousness that is within us rising up and that can access these greater aspects of ourselves, our higher potential, as well as help us to come from a, play, a higher place of. Now, there is something that some people refer to as fusing or merging with your kundalini. Now, this is a step that most people, like we hear about, like ascended masters, you know, such as like the Buddha, Buddha, <laughs> the Buddha or Krishna um, <clears throat> or white buffalo woman, you know, are ascended masters that merge with that kundalini, meaning that they come from that heart-like space at all times. And that's how you feel on the most of this. You know, some people even refer to Ram Das as being such as an ascended master. I never met him personally, but from my stories and the way that people speak of being around him, it sounds like such. Um, so that's what the merging of. So the second one is what people refer to as chi. Now, chi is all manifestations of energy, both material and immaterial, physical and spiritual. You know, some say that life is a gathering or witnessing of chi. Now we have chi within us, but the chi is the everything, the all. And this is something that people talk about, that chi is the general manifestation of all energy in all of its different forms and likeness thereof. You know, there's something referred to as the Tao sometimes, and that the Tao is older than God or Tao is older than anything we know. And that is still just a label we're using to explain this ultimate thing. So chi is sometimes referred to that as well as activating your chi or witnessing the chi around, gathered in within yourself. Um, for more of this, dive into Chinese philosophy, and there's several other books and so forth out there. If you want me to dive more into qi or things like qi gong that help activate the qi within you, let me know down in the comments below. So this brings us to the third point. 
Now, the third point is prana. Prana is movement or breath. In Sanskrit, on means breath. Pra means forth. So breath forth, breathing forth, life force. So prana is life force. It is the life force within us that allows us to move, to act, to connect with each other. It is the breathing within us, the breath, the life force. It is dynamic and is vital to us. It is our personal energy. So you can view that chi is both personal and external and everything, the all. But also prana is us, is the literal of us moving. So when you're doing prana yama yoga or pranayama breath you are moving the body moving the energy within you allowing it to not become stagnant because all things are in motion at all times all things are vibrating consistently there is nothing in this realm except for intentions and vibrations that's all everything is at least that's been my experience and so what you allow yourself into yourself what you subscribe to is the intentions and vibrations you are choosing to experience your reality in these are forms, permission slips that we allow to, you know. So using prana, chi, kundalini, breathwork, yoga, spirituality, plant medicine, eating a certain way, working out, believing in certain modalities, the stories we describe to ourselves, alchemy, shamanism, these are all permission slips that we invoke within ourselves and subscribe to. They're just intentions and vibrations. So what are you tuned into? So if you got value out of this video, let me know in the comments down below or hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't before. And if you want to check out more awesome videos here, click here for an awesome playlist. Hope you're having an awesome and great day and wishing you joy and success. Peace.